addresses. If one is discussing or debating people of other religions, he or she must have an understanding of these faiths, thus allowing them to build a common ground and talk to them about Tawheed, monotheism, the oneness of God, which they might be neglecting in their religion. The Quran instructs Muslims to give da'wah to people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, by emphasizing the similarities between the different faiths and establishing common ground, while reminding them that we should worship none but Allah, the one and only creator, and not to associate any partners with him. Say, O people of the scripture, to come to common terms between us and you, that we will not worship except Allah, and not associate anything with him, and not take one another as lords instead of Allah. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims, submitting to him. Quran 364 When engaging in dialogue with people of the book, our main goal is to present and invite them to join our beautiful religion, and not to necessarily talk down or prove their faith or book wrong, as there is a time and place for that. Our goal is to prove that what we offer is the true word of God, and that our religion is the only faith acceptable to God. The one engaging in da'wah dialogue has a goal not to win the argument, but to win over the person. Sometimes heated arguments serve only to distance a person from Islam. When giving da'wah, one should not make the other feel worthless or denounce him. The attitude of the person inviting should be gentle, kind, and beautiful, the same one would offer if they were inviting them to their own home. It becomes imperative that one conveys the message with softness and gentleness because an attitude of harshness could discourage and further people from the truth. In fact, God tells Prophet Muhammad in the Holy Quran if he was harsh and stern in conveying the message to his companions, known to be the best people that ever lived, they would have dispersed from him. God also instructed Prophet Moses and his brother Prophet Aaron Harun in Arabic to gently and softly convey the message of Islam to the Pharaoh, despite his repute as the worst human being that ever lived, who proclaimed himself as a god and killed babies and innocent people. The success of da'wah is measured by one's intention and effort, and not necessarily from the number of people they convert. One might give da'wah for years and not convert a single soul. In fact, Prophet Noah preached the message of Islam for about 950 years and witnessed a very few conversions. It's important that one continues to constantly remember the intention of his work, which is all and always for the sake of God. For those that feel they don't have time to spread the word of Islam, they must realize that those currently spreading the word are themselves busy people who make time in their hectic schedules for da'wah, an activity they see as an obligation. This is what God expects from them, something they do in exchange for the great rewards that awaits them. Additionally, God states that the best manner of speech one can utter in this world is those words of invitation that draw people to God's religion, inviting others to grasp and comprehend the purpose of their creation. God states, And who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah in this righteousness and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. Quran 20, 23-24 Additionally, for the ones that spread the word of Islam and teach others well, our Prophet narrated, Indeed, Allah, His messengers, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earths, even the ants and the whole, even the fish, pray for the blessings on those upon the ones who teach people to do good. In addition, our Prophet narrated, Whoever directs someone to do good will gain the same reward as the one who does the good. So if someone accepts Islam from you, you will receive the great rewards from God for the effort. On the day of judgment, non-Muslims will face Allah, the ultimate judge, and will be questioned regarding their faith. Your non-Muslim friends, colleagues, classmates, and neighbors can potentially incriminate you as a person who failed to give them the message. This is why you must convey the message of Islam, carrying it out in your daily life in speech and in actions. God states in the Quran that he has made us the middle nation, so we could testify to all people. God has honored and chosen us to service humanity, guiding people back to God. Oh my dear brother or sister, you need to carry the message of Islam in your daily life. It should show in your character, your dealings with others, your business transactions, and in your everyday tasks. Otherwise, our Prophet may serve as a witness against you on the Day of Judgment, and you could potentially get punished for your neglect of this vital and important life task.